Drumsta. I'm Levi Thompson. And uh, we're two of the editors of Tahir Documents. And we wanted to thank Creative Time for giving us the opportunity to talk to you guys here today. So um, this year, soon after demonstrations began in Cairo on January 25th, international media sources rushed to describe this protest activity as the beginning of yet another Twitter revolution. The meme developed in conjunction with the Tunisian uprising that had deposed President Zine al Abidin Ben Ali weeks earlier. Yet any visitor to Tahrir Square, and we were among those visitors, during the later days of the revolution, and especially after Mubarak's fall, was immediately struck by the proliferation of printed material and chants that circulated to animate the crowds. Now freed from the fear that had gripped them for decades, Egyptians of all ages, many with no prior public interest in politics, handed out foundational statements for new parties and lists of demands, while amateur poets attempted to document in rhyme and meter the atmosphere of naked hope that permeated the square. The simple act of sharing paper with others became integral to the foundation of a new political community, a Tahrir Republic. If social media played a key role in the organization and orchestration of these protests, by helping protesters spread their message of change and mobilize the Egyptian masses, we might say that print media has taken over now that new political futures have had to be articulated in more detail. It is this latter aspect of cultural production in Egypt that Tahrir Documents aims to record, archive, and disseminate to English language audiences. Tahrir Documents is an online archive of papers collected at the now famous Friday demonstrations in Cairo, reproduced alongside complete English translations. The project consists of four managing editors, a board of reviewers, and over 60 volunteer translators. We have no institutional affiliation whatsoever, nor are we associated with any political organization, Egyptian or otherwise. Translators who might ordinarily receive upwards of $30 hourly for their work instead volunteer their services in the interest of speedily disseminating these long form and multifarious texts to English language audiences. And this is part of what makes Tahrir documents unique. Whereas other attempts to document the revolution, most notably OR Book's recent publication, Tweets from the Revolution, circumscribe the revolution as a completed event by selecting a narrative of tweets from certain, often Anglophone, activists, Tahrir Documents records the revolution as an ongoing praxis, conveying to English language audiences the incredible diversity of forms that political action is now taking in Egypt, and transmitting voices that, because they appear on paper and not on the net, might ordinarily be overlooked or lost. We would now like to show you some of the documents we've collected on our website and touch on why printed matter has remained so important during the recent events in Egypt. This screenshot shows the title page of a document found by one of our volunteers on July 8th. The document is a complete Islamic constitution developed and issued by Al-Azhar, the institution at the zenith of orthodox Sunni religious thought in 1977. Although originally drafted more than 30 years ago, this document's recent re-emergence in the square indicates the centrality to public life of current calls for a democratic state based on the tenets of Islam. Notably, this alternative constitution is not a call for a the theocracy, nor is it in any way related to Salafist evangelizing. Rather, it sets forth in detailed terms a structure for a democratic Islamic state in which leaders are held accountable for their actions. Here we have a page from the revolutionary newspaper Gornal, think journal in English, which provides a fantastic example of the kinds of visual humor uh, through which the Egyptian masses overcame their fears of the state security apparatus and tyranny in general. The illustration depicts Colonel Muammar Gaddafi radio controlling fighter jets in an attack against his people who are rising up against him. Keep in mind that this newspaper was published on February 25th during the beginnings of the Libyan uprising. The article's title reads, quote, Muammar, I'm delivering an address to an empty square, Gaddafi, and the text itself proceeds to lambast Gaddafi for his irrationality. Quote, Gaddafi used to say that the English writer William Shakespeare was of Arab descent and that his name was Sheikh Zubair. Uh, and uh, Gaddafi fiercely defended, quote, the woman's right to vote, whether she be male or female. But because Tahrir Documents aims to translate not only the content of papers distributed in the square, but also the spirit created by print of all kinds in this space, our archive also includes photographs of many signs and posters displayed in the square. 
Here, we have a photograph of a sign that presents a poem titled Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. In this poem, Hosni Mubarak plays the role of Ali Baba, robbing the Egyptian people of their land and wealth while pandering to foreign interests. In the final line, he is likened to a pharaoh, a common theme in Egyptian revolutionary discourse when the poet writes, quote, listen, O people, to my words, hang the pharaoh and live in peace. This series of posters, handwritten with marker and displayed on the sidewalk near a metro station, variously celebrate the revolution's victory in poetic terms, condemn the crimes of Mubarak and his corrupt officials, bemoan the country's economic strife, and even cite song lyrics from the popular singer Amr Diab, it's the most popular Egyptian singer. Quote, we came together with love and the world will hear us, it reads. And then in smaller writing, with apologies to the singer Amr Diab for having quoted words from his song. Meanwhile, in this document titled Declaration and Public Announcement, an address to Field Marshal Mohammed Tintawi and Prime Minister Issam Sharaf, whose pictures appear at the top, farmers from the El Ayat region of Giza deplore the government's sale of their land to foreign investors from Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. These farmers ask that the new government allow them to cultivate this land in the hopes that a return to local production and farming might ease unemployment and price fluctuations in their area of Giza. Quote, we are ready to prepare and cultivate the land of Ayat ourselves. We will not burden the Egyptian government with the cultivation of this land. The documents we present on our website, tahrirdocuments.org, provide a cross-section of Egyptian revolutionary thought. Readers can witness the development of, po of the political scene in Egypt as new issues come to the forefront. In March, for example, when debate raged over amending the constitution, a flurry of documents sprang up elaborating the arguments of various political groups. As time has progressed, political parties have made increasing use of print media, handing out documents in the public square to state their platforms and solicit support. Our intention with the project is to create a searchable electronic English archive that will be available to future scholars of um, Egyptian and Middle Eastern politics and history. Although we see the project as a step beyond the social networking aspect of the Egyptian revolution, we are on Twitter ourselves and we post new translations every day currently, uh, followed by a tweet. Our handle is at Tahrir Documents, and should you know of anyone who may be interested in volunteering with us as a translator or otherwise, um, our email is tahrirdocuments at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.